Unfortunately, we are on road and we know what's going on too. Bad man, bad boy, bad. So you're happy that he's like that? You should be shedding tears, my brother. How can he be a bad boy? How can you say he's a bad boy? The youngsters are getting pulled in. Why? Outside glamour, it looks good. Islam doesn't completely stop all desires. It shows you the right way. Don't have a girlfriend, have a wife. On that day, you will realize because you will say, what did I do? How could I throw my whole life away? Following this fool. Be careful who you befriend. Be careful who your circle of friends is. Be careful who you're rolling with. Be careful who you're on road with. You may want to pull yourself out of the hole. They will kick you on your face and put you back down. Dear respected ulama, dear brothers and elders, mothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <coughs> it's very commonly believed and very well understood by way of example that peer pressure will lead to beer pressure. And beer pressure will lead to nothing other than blood pressure. We find amongst our circles we are in, the friends we are rolling with, we see youngsters rolling around in the crowds they roll, and we see that they roll all in a particular colour. They won't be one side really pious, one side really non-pious, one side very advancing in terms of their deen and other side people are really lacking. There's a general trend which are found amongst groups of people. If a group is going in a certain direction, the majority of the people will be in that particular color. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us this and reminded us this. Every single thing which came from the Prophet ﷺ, I swear by Allah, is nothing but haqq. All haqq, everything which came from the Prophet ﷺ, Allahu Akbar, every sunnah, every ada, everything which he did was a source of guidance for this particular ummah. He told us, he advised us, he admonished us, he reminded us, he emphasized and told the Ummah, listen very carefully. Al-mar'u ala deeni khalilihi, fal yanzur man yukhalil. Wa fi riwaya, fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? A person will follow the religion, the deen, the way of his friend. If this is the case, what then? فَلْيَنظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ فَلْيَنظُرْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Two different riwayah. So be careful, be cautious about who you take as your friends. Befriend somebody that will give you benefit. Befriend somebody that will do you some good. Befriend somebody that by sitting with that person, by rolling with that person, by being with that person, they will be a source of khair and they will be a source of benefit for you. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentions this one particular riwayah. They were sitting in the, the group with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now someone posed a question and asked, from the people we have which are sitting with us, the company we have which is around us, the friends which we have in our particular circle, who do you think in your opinion is the best person for us to befriend? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him three very very simple things. When you see three particular qualities, when you see three particular signs, then verily that person you should befriend, that person should be your better friend. Who is that person? Man dhakkarakum billahi ru'yatuhu The first person, when you look at this person, it reminds you about Allah, meaning it reminds you about the deen of Allah. When you look at this person, you think of something to do with deen. When you look at somebody, the first image lasts, there's a first impression. When you're walking in the street and you're stretching your legs that further, that step. When you're strutting that shoulders, those even bit more. When you're wearing that chaps on your hands, people are going to look at you, they're going to say, now hold on, this person looks a bit dodgy to me. This is how I perceive this person. The first look lasts. They're going to look at you. They're going to see who you are with, and that is going to be the lasting impression which is in the person's mind in regards to you. The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say to his Sahaba? The very, very first thing. 
That particular person you should befriend من ذكركم بالله رؤيته When you look at this person, it reminds you of Allah. It reminds you of the deen of Allah. Number two, وَزَادَ فِي عِلْمِكُمْ مَنْتِقُهُ When this person speaks, when this person has a conversation, when he has some dialogue, something in that speech will increase your ilm and increase your knowledge. Befriend such a person like that. And number three, وَذَكَّرَكُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ عَمَلُهُ One, this person, you look at him, it reminds you of deen. Two, when you sit with him, it, rem- it increases your knowledge. And number three, when you look at these pers- this person's actions, it makes you conscious, it makes you aware, it makes you more ready for the akhirah. We choose friends on which criteria? Which basis do we choose our friends? Are we cautious who we take as friends? We've got this illness within us and it falls more with the youngsters. If somebody is looking hard, you know, someone pulls off of being a bit of a rude boy. Someone can pull off of being a bit of a G, he rolls. People look at him and say, yeah, my man's on road, he's on road. So we like to associate ourselves with people like that. I was sitting once in a particular shop. I was sitting on the corner. And the shop is owned by a Muslim brother. I worked there for a little while, that's how I was sitting there. I don't just sit and hang around the shops for no reason. When Molvi Sahab, you get real shops. I, for a certain reason, I wasn't just sitting there for fun. I was working there for a short amount of time. Molvi Sahab, you and shops, of course, bye, we all have to work. You know, it's not, we're gonna ra- you know, if Manna and Salwa was coming from the skies, that's another situation. But keeping on the line, I was sitting there, one youngster comes in, he doesn't see me. Now, alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah, still among some societies or some communities, we will find there is some, some skepticism, or rather there are some feelings which stop us from going to the absolute limits. Meaning, still someone won't feel comfortable walking around. This is not all areas. Some, some people will feel, I can't walk around in my local neighborhood with a cigarette in my hand. I can't walk down this particular alley with a girl holding hand. I cannot be seen dead rolling in a club in this particular area. Because now it's a muscle of Izzah. Your respect is at stake. There is something you may do which may jeopardize something you have in the future. So some people are skeptical. Some. Unfortunately, this trend is finishing very fast. There was a time when people would walk in the street, they wouldn't even want to be smelling of even smoking of a cigarette. But this halat are changing. It's becoming more socially acceptable. What was considered evil in the past is now more nowadays becoming more and more acceptable as the day goes on. Someone has a, a child outside wedlock. So long as the nikah is made, we feel so at ease. So at ease. My, my, well, my son, he had the nikah done. Look at Florina Putta, look what he did. Look what they did. Then the children have not even got married yet. So we feel content. That it's okay, it's no problem. And my son only got smacked with a brick over the head, yours got smacked with a boulder. By brick is a brick. It's going to cause you damage. But this is our, unfortunately our attitude when it comes to the deen. Now alhamdulillah, you still have some people that have that skepticism. They're still unsure, they don't want to disgrace themselves in community. But he walks in, and he's talking to the brother. And he shows him a picture of one guy. They're talking just general garbage. And he went in and he was showing the picture to this, young, this guy at the shop. And he was saying, trust me, you know my man. Wallah, bad boy, bad boy. He's a bad boy, bruv. And what does the guy do? The guy is notorious for being a crack dealer, a heroin dealer, drug dealer. Forgive me for talking frank. But this is what, how people have come to. This is what is attractive to us. Why? Because he's got a new plate car? Because he's got old traps around his hands? Because he's rolling with a gold chain? He's making a disgrace of the deen and you think he's good? My man's a bad boy. My man's a rude boy. What rude boy? Destroy, destroying the lives of the people. Selling drugs to the people. Selling drugs to your own Muslim brothers. Making your own Muslim brothers crackheads and brownheads. Is this what we are turned to? Is this what we have become? And he's a bad boy, he's a joker, he's an animal. Put him behind bars, he's better to stay there and rot. 
Make Tawbah, then Alhamdulillah come back. No Tawbah, stay there like an animal. Die like an animal, you deserve a dog's death. How can he be a bad boy? How can you say he's a bad boy? Yes, he's bad. Linguistically bad. Bah man, bad boy, bad. Who are you calling that without such proud, so pride? So you're happy that he's like that? You should be shedding tears, my brother. You should be shedding tears. That this is the attraction of the youth. What happens? We shy away from these subjects. We shy away from these topics. We can't talk about these things, very taboo subjects. Because someone mentioned something from the member, oh, he's referring to such and such a person's son. He's referring to such and such a person's cousin. Unfortunately, we are on road and we know what's going on too. We know. Some people think that the ulama haven't got a clue. I don't like to refer to myself as an alim of deen. But people have given me that sunnah, that's up to them. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know what's going on. We know what people are going through. It's not like we've just come from a straw hut and come into the masjid. We know what's on road. We know what people are feeling. And the pull it's got is unbelievable. The youngsters are getting pulled in. Why? Outside glamour. It looks good. Money. Shine. One youngster come up to me. I was behind an, a shopping parade in my local area. He came up to me and he said some praise, words of praise. I, I don't really get too impressed with someone says to me, MashaAllah, Malana, Bhoda Chabian, this and that. It doesn't affect me. Because before death, our A'mal, how do we know at the time of death we will be deprived of Kalima or not? إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالْخَوَاطِينَ It is the seal at the end which makes the difference between a Jannati and a Jahannami. So people get all content in their deeds. Alhamdulillah. I pray five times Salah. You were supposed to do that anyway. I fast in the month of Ramadan. What extra things have you done which are worthy of that sort of a praise for yourself? But I was behind the shop and he mentioned some positive things. And I said to him, brother, I know you, you know me, because I've known you for a number of years. I don't need to be given an introduction to what you do for a living, because I know, brother. You praising me, or saying some words in praise for what I have doing, or what I am doing. Doesn't that give you an indication that that is the right way? I'm not saying I'm on the right way. You want to follow a way? Follow the way of Prophet ﷺ. Follow the way of the Sahaba. He just saw that this is a person growing up in our ends, so he can do it, so can I. So I said to him, my dear respected brother, please, the way you are talking to me indicates you don't like this life as well. I swear by Allah, Allah is so kind. You, you shut the shop today and you say, Ya Allah, I'm turned to you. Bari, sinner, disgrace. My heart is full with darkness. My face is full with darkness. Allah still will say, come to me. I'm ready to forgive all of this. And I said like this, Wallah, he was near enough crying. But what happens is momentarily, it's like a spasm, it comes and goes. And I said to him, brother, look, we're here, you've got my number, it's not like you don't know who, you can come to me, I'm there for you. But what happens, the moment he rolls around the shop, the moment, he just takes five steps and he sees another Muslim brother. There's no concept of salam. Where's the good old days of saying assalamu alaikum a dua for your Muslim brother? It's trendy to talk in a fashionable way. It looks good to be able to spit a few words, to make rhymes, to spit some bars. The good the old words of assalam, assalamu alaikum, is a dua for your Muslim brother. How do they respond? Ewat blood, wagwan blood. You cool blood. What's this? But it looks good. I know words which you don't know. So I say that extra bit louder because I want man to notice me. We're following those ways which have got no success. But moments he takes steps. That's it. Lock off again. Had he have then come with me there and then. We could have taken him to the masjid, we could have taken him into some gathering, sat him down, spoke a bit about Allah, spoke a bit about Rasulullah, spoke a bit about Tawbah, told him about Sahaba, he would have made a U-turn from there and then. 
but he bumps into one of his fellow Muslim drug dealer brothers. When we see some of these boys on road, they put their head down in shame, they inside they know it's wrong. But they're in a circle of friends which put them in that situation, they can't get out. They feel helpless. So the Prophet ﷺ knew, if you're from Ilford, if you're from Romford, you're from Goodmayers, you're from East London, North London, North England, South England, where you are, wherever situation you may, may be in, Allah knew. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said words which were given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْنُ يُوحَىٰ This is all revelation. This is why in Islam, we follow Qur'an and also the hadith. Hadith is an integral part of our deen. He said those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him with. What did he say? What did he say? Remind ourselves of that hadith. Be careful who you befriend. Be careful who your circle of friends is. Be careful who you're rolling with. Be careful who you're on road with. You may want to pull yourself out of the hole. They will kick you on your face and put you back down. And we fall victim because it looks attractive. It looks attractive. He's built himself a house in Jahannam, the fire in Jahannam by selling things which are wrong, by doing things which are wrong. Are oh, these are the sort of people we want to roll around with? But unfortunately, it's become trendy, it's become attractive, and people pull towards these things. Even the Muslim person, the Muslim youth, it was sufficient that we said, La ilaha illallah, and Muhammad Rasulullah for us to abstain from this. Our own lack of enter. Thought of the Akhirah is even gone from our brains. Now the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned these three things. Befriend who? Take that friend as who? Man dhakkarakum billahi ru'yatuhu When you look at this person, he reminds you of Allah, he reminds you of the deen of Allah. Not when you look at him, he's going to remind you of some crack dealer, some drug dealer. When you look at him, you can say, MashaAllah, you know him, he's got an attachment to deen, this guy. Don't befriend that person who's going to take you into the path of Jahannam. Friend, befriend that person who? وَزَادَ فِي مَنْتِقِهِ عِلْمَكُمْ وَزَادَ فِي عِلْمِكُمْ مَنْتِقُهُ Sorry. وَزَادَ فِي عِلْمِكُمْ مَنْتِقُهُ When that person speaks, he increases your knowledge. When that person talks, your knowledge of deen grows. Your understanding of the Qur'an, your understanding of the Sunnah, our great beautiful legacy of the past increases. And what? وَذَكَّرَكُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ عَمَلُهُ When this person does good deeds, it reminds you of the Akhirah. Hold that person hand in hand. Be friends with that person. Because there is benefit in that. You will benefit from that in this world as well as the Akhirah. You've got 10 people in a crowd. Nine of them are looking like they're about to do some damage on road. One of them may be all pious and looking all good. What happens? As soon a time will come, he will also get gulfed up in that garbage as well. If he's not strong enough, and don't think the females and the sisters are free from this as well. Also same to them as well. We have to be very careful about who we're taking as our friends. Because what's going to happen is, if we are not strong enough, we cannot turn them. If we cannot be a da'i, we will be mad'u, we will be called. It doesn't mean we hate them. We don't hate nobody. We hate the sin someone does. Yes, that's another thing. When we see someone doing some wrong things, we don't hate that person. Because inherently, I guarantee they have some good qualities as well. Just like that brother came up to me, and he said to me, honestly, I'm, I'm tired, I've had enough. And I said to him, brother, Wallah, turn to Allah. And I gave him those examples, but still, it is that crowd which pulls him back, or those people that pull him back. What good are friends like that? What will benefit friends like that? On one side, we have nuqsan and we have harm. 
For those types of friends that will pull you in the fire of Jahannam. On the other side, Allahu Akbar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions in a hadith, there will be seven types of people. They will be underneath the arsh on the day of Qiyamah. There will be no shade except for the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's arsh. Sab'atun yudhilluhumullahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhilluhu imamun adil wa shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi azza wa jal wa rajulun qalbuhu mu'allakun bil masajid wa rajulan tahabba fi Allah ijtama'a alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi wa rajulun da'a what are those types of people? Who are those types of people that will be given shade underneath the arsh on the day of Qiyamah? How fortunate! It will be boiling hot! We will be in parishani. We will be in difficulty. Allah will put some people underneath His arsh. They will be in Aisha and Isha until their time for questioning comes as well. Allahu Akbar. Imamun Adil, a just ruler. I don't even want to sidetrack. I don't even want to sidetrack. We need this sifa in the ummah. Give somebody a little platform. And they utilize that and abuse that. Such an illness this has become. Hubbi The love for status. A mad, a jeeb illness. It's spread like wildfire. Look at some of the problems we see nowadays in our Muslim countries. They want to get off their kursi. I don't want to step down. If it means hurting people, if it means making people bleed, they don't care. They'll stay there. They will hurt people. They will destroy people, but they won't move off their kursi. And we are seeing this, aren't we? We can't be blind to the facts what we see. How sad, how sad. And treated like animals, no dignity. Hit and beaten by so-called people that call themselves Muslims. But secondly was that youngster, and that shab, that nojuan, that young man and young woman, who nasha'a fi ibadatillah, that youngster that can worship in, the, in their youth, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a place underneath his arsh on the day of qiyamah. It's not difficult. We have to just curb our desires. Not restrain them, curb them in the right way. One Mawlana mentioned, Islam, khayshat kudbata nahi hai. Islam, khayshat kudbata nahi hai. Magar usko sahi rukh batata hai. Islam doesn't completely stop all desires. It shows you the right way. Don't have a girlfriend. Have a wife. When you put a lukma in her mouth, this will be a sadaqah for you. You don't want... You know, there are so many examples, but I don't want to sidetrack because we're on one topic. So the first one was the just ruler. The second one was the youngster. The third person, that person whose heart remains attached to the masajid. When you take that person out, the person says, Ya gosh, I wish I was back in the masjid again. Heart attached to the masjid. 7.45 Asr, MashaAllah, Salah was on time. I don't know what the condition is here and no one has put anything in my ears. I can tell you locally what I've seen in some of my masajids. Let it be 7.45 and 10 seconds. Wallah, once I came late for Salah once, there was a next sale. And it just so happened I got blocked on one of the main roads. Now look, I'm oblivious, I, was, I, didn't even know, I wasn't even aware. I drive into the road and now locked. And I left 15 minutes earlier. I thought, you know what, I'm going to get there early, four rakah sunnah before Zuhr, a bit of tilawah maybe, and I'm going to believe the Salah. This was when I was Imam. When? Going back last year. Now what happened? Time goes, I'm locked, in down, I'm locked down in traffic. I'm looking at the time and now my pasina is dropping from my head. Yard, half past one and no one there. What happened was, someone stood at half past and they said, Kithe ke molvi sahab? And someone goes, Okay, but the jana next sale ta tur gaya. Maybe he's gone and taken himself to the next sale. But this is Allahu Akbar, no one bucks no one, no one saves no one. So nevertheless, that person's heart should be attached to the masjid. 
When it comes to the masjid, we just send yaar, fat, fat, let's get this job over and done with yaar. Where's Imam Sab? Aaw, the jaw. Chai the pare. Quick and come. Bas. Ya Allah, we should be thinking, so long as I am in this masjid waiting for salah, the malaika are writing rewards for me as if I am in salah. Don't we think like this? Imagine someone said to you, praying salah, you're going to get a tenner, ten pound, ten minutes, ten pounds. You're going to say, Ya Kash Imam Sahib, five pounds are there, you know? Five pounds are there, we're going to get five or more. I hope Imam Sahib is late. The, the second it ticks, and people, Bhai, have you ever been to an Asian wedding? Kabi gay? Dobaji, if they say, come at two o'clock, what time are you going to roll in? Four? Yeah, the next day, four. This is how the situation. I don't mean to be crude, I don't mean to be harsh. But this is the reality, we're not very punctual people. But sticking on the subject, because I don't want to kind of latch, go into different... Let's keep focused. Third thing of what the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi mentions. We were discussing about the importance of having good friends. And we said the harms which can be created. I want to give you a few fada'il and virtues of having good friends. Now the fourth thing is what? وَرَجُلًا تَحَابًا فِي اللَّهِ اِجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ And this is why I mentioned this hadith. Two particular people, they get together. They love one another for the sake of Allah and they depart for the sake of Allah. اِجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ رَجُلًا تَحَابًا فِي اللَّهِ اِجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ وَتَفَرَّقَ عَلَيْهِ They love one another. They gather together and they disperse for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, this is halal love. I don't want youngsters saying, yeah, Mawli Sahib passed fatwa. Now I can go, I can do what I want. Don't misinterpret the hadith. وَرَجُلًا Two, if they are one brother, one brother, two Muslim brothers, or two Muslim sisters, don't get the wires mixed up in this, please. اِجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهِ We never know. Allah's rahma is so vast. You never know how and when Allah's rahma will come into Josh. You never know. Our gathering here, maybe Allah's fazl could be such, even we could be from amongst those people. We never know. Allah's rahmah is not tongue. It's not like a little narrow tube. Allah's rahmah is very vast. They gather and they disperse for this purpose. Do we not we love each other for the sake of Allah? Of course we do. It didn't sound very convincing, but inshallah we do. But let's just hope, perhaps, perhaps, a big perhaps, you never know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts. I mentioned this hadith before this, but it doesn't seem right I leave the other three points because I've got what I wanted to achieve. So I will mention the last three points very quickly. One other person who will be underneath the arsh on the day of Qiyamah is who? Is who? That young male, a beautiful woman tries to seduce him. She's got a good family lineage. She is beautiful. She is striking. And she tries to seduce him. What do you say? No, no, no. I fear Allah. I fear my Allah. And you hold yourself back. It's not easy, is it? It's not easy. We never said it was easy. But imagine a person, if they even do this once, once, in the heat of passions, in the heat of desires, when you're Desires were the hierarchy. There's no wife, there's nothing, a man is parishan. At that point, at your absolute maximum, you say, no. Look at the father of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry. You made a sacrifice there. No need to worry. On the day of Qiyamah, you will be underneath my arsh. This is why I say to the youngsters, yes, I never said it was easy rolling in the campus. I never said it was easy rolling in college. Sometimes rain is a rahma in June. Samjhe na? Rain is rahma in June. Because unfortunately we find some brothers finishing the masjid going, within moments, amal all gone. And you know what I'm referring to. If a person can abstain once and hold themselves back and say, no, 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 no I'm not going to do this. How kind is Allah? This one excuse is to get Allah's rahmah in Josh. Allah will put that person on the arsh on the day of Qiyamah. Sasta soda bhai. Three minutes, five minutes. One, you do that and many, how many thousands of years will it go on for? Allahu Akbar. 50,000 years. One day in the Akhirah. How many years will pass? Years will pass. A person says, Shukra, I made that sacrifice. This is what Allah has given me today. Think wide. Think wide. Don't think so short-sighted. But moving on. Number six. That person who gives sadaqah quietly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't even, the left hand doesn't even know what the right hand has given. Meaning what? Not that a person goes, 
uh, allergy. Let's put say eyes closed. No, it's making ishara towards someone giving with ikhlas quietly. You look for examples, moqa. No one's in the masjid now? Judge, let me put in 10 pounds. Let me put in 15 pounds. There was recently a masjid donate, uh, charity, an organization. Someone stood up and goes, Malik sahab, mera naam likhleo. Write my name. I'm ready to give a thousand pound with my previous thousand pounds. What was the point in saying that? What was the point? All your amal gone. You know when the time I went for my fourth hajj, why do you say that for? My fourth hajj. Mention generally when I went to hajj. I saw this when I was given the tawfiq to do the ziyarat of Baytullah. Oh my fourth hajj, my fifth hajj, my tenth hajj. All gone. 30,000 pounds you spend in tickets, throw it all down the drain. Nothing you will get. But then number seven. That person who sits in seclusion, who remembers my Allah and can't control himself, tears drop down that person's face. Allah can see the ta'alluq between him and that slave. Allah says, don't worry, your tears have not gone to waste. You are going to go underneath the arsh as well. Seven people. But this number four category, two people, two rajulan, two males in the mention in the hadith, is not limited just to the males. Sister with sister. A Muslim sister with another Muslim sister. If they love each other for the sake of Allah, they meet each other for this, they disperse on this, inshaAllah they will also be given this reward as well. It is so much better to roll with those people that will benefit your akhirah. Because they will benefit you in this world, they will also benefit you in the hereafter as well. We are so short-sighted, but we are so attracted to those things which are haram. The Prophet ﷺ told us, حُجِبَتِ النَّارُ shahawat. Be careful, because Jahannam has been shrouded, it's been covered with taklif and difficulties and things your nafs will be inclined towards. We have to stop ourselves, we have to hold ourselves back. And think to ourselves, Ya Allah, is the Akhirah is coming. Each and every one of us, we are going to go to the Akhirah. Why not sacrifice just this 60 year life in the itaat of Allah, in the obedience of Allah? I swear by Allah, rahat in this dunya and rahat in the Akhirah as well. But one of those steps to reformation comes from where? We have to make sure our circle of friends are correct. We meet each other for the sake of Allah. We are strong for the sake of Allah. And what happens, alhamdulillah, if two brothers are on the deen, if one slacks a little bit, the other one phones him up, brother, come on, let's go, let's go markaz, let's go for bayan, let's go and sit in this program, let's go and visit this sheikh, let's go and sit in this dars, let's go and do, you know, there's even going out and playing football with your fellow Muslim brothers, nothing wrong with that. MashaAllah, locally there was one group of Muslims, they played football, half time, salah, all done wudu, all lined up with their kits and they prayed their salah. What's wrong with that? What a beautiful image. Your friends can be those people that say, come on, let's go. When it comes time for salah, we're going to do our salah. Alhamdulillah. That's a good friend. But we're having those friends that don't do this generally. What happens? They're deterring us from the deen. They're taking us away from the deen. Nah, bro, love that, love that, man. That's more of this stuff. Come on, man. Look what? Why are you stopping them? A brother says, yeah, I need to pray salah. Oh, but allow that, we can do that afterwards. You got plenty of time. Allahu Akbar, you have been the means of making that person miss his salah. But we don't take heed, we should understand, is this person beneficial for me in the first place? I'm not saying we be abrupt. We don't speak to people in a negative way. We befriend everybody. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? فَلْيَنْظُرْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Those people who are your gehra dost, your sincere friend, your close friend. Your close friend. Your bridgings as they like to say. Be those people that will benefit you. Let those people that will help you and assist you. Not those people that will throw you in the fire of Jahannam. What's going to happen? All this, all the life a person will leave, a lead. On the day of judgment, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah Rabbul Izzat mentions, Al Akhillahu Yawma Idin, Ba'aduhum Bi Ba'adin Adu. There will be people on the day of Qiyamah, they will be friends, but with one another they will actually be enemies. They will be enemies to one another. Al Akhillah, 
the, there will be some friends. What? يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ adu. They will be enemies amongst one another. They will hate each other. Because they will see this na like is because of him that I suffered in the qabr. Is because of him on the day of judgment Allah is making me feel disgraced. But what Allah brings here, illa, illa, except there will be some friends who you will say, Ya, why did I make you a friend? But Allah mentions here, illa, no, 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 there's an exception. Hear me out, illa al muttaqeen. Those people who are God fearing, those people who are pious, those per people who have taqwa as one of their inherent qualities, their, their traits, their characteristics, befriend that person. You won't go wrong. But if you just any old Joey, any old joker, then wallah you will see nuqsan. In another particular ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws our attention towards another snapshot on the day of Qiyamah. A person will say what will happen yawma ya'addu dhalim ala yadayhi that zalim that person who did wrong in this dunya what will he do on the day of judgment he will be biting away at his hand biting away at his fingers yawma ya'addu dhalim ala yadayhi he will be biting constantly at his fingers what will he say يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا I wish only if I could do so. I would have taken the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as my friend. يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا Gosh, I wish, I wish I could go back, turn the clocks back and I would have taken that path of Allah and Allah's Rasul. Quran is telling us, bye. Quran is telling us on that day, a zalim will be biting his hands. Oh, what did I do to myself? What did I do? But there's no U turn now. No U turn for that particular person. Allah will say, No, you cannot go back into this dunya. What happened has happened. Bygones are now bygones. Forget about it now. There's no second chance for you. Only if I could have made with the Prophet ﷺ a path. Allahu Akbar. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions further. A person will mention what? Ya waylata laytani lam attakhid fulan and khalila. On one side, I wish I took the Prophet ﷺ as my friend. And gosh, I wish I never took this person as my friend. I wish I could go back. Ya waylata. Oh ho. He's saying. How I yet late any? I wish I could go back. I would turn the clocks back. I would not befriend such a person. What did that person do? لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ إِذْ جَاءَنِي Whenever someone said to me, Brother, Bismillah, let's go and pray Jumu'ah. Brother, Bismillah, let's go and do this. On one side, we had this nasiha coming to us, and this this fool he came to me and he deterred me and took me away and beguiled me. And took me onto the wrong path. I fell into the trap. I was weak. And today I'm suffering. Ya Allah, make him suffer. And this is what in the commentary of Ibn Kathir he mentions. When two people like this will be brought forth. One affected the other. He will say, Ya Allah, it's because of him. Ya Allah, I'm in this nuqsan today. Let him go through the same thing, if not worse. On that day, you will realize because you will say, what did I do? How could I throw my whole life away following this fool? But there's no turning back. Allahu Akbar. No turning back. What's done is done. Bygones are bygones. You can cry tears. They can finish. You can cry, cry blood. That can finish. You can cry pus and all manners of liquids. Anything to come. All the fat and everything in your body. Allah will say, no, no, no. You had your chance. You had that one chance. It's not my fault. You, you threw it down the drain. Your fault. It's your fault. Allahu Akbar. May Allah Ta'ala save us all. May Allah take us away in the condition of Iman. Because Khudana Khasta, imagine if somebody were to go into the fire of Jahannam and their certificate was to be permanent there. Their fasla was done. No, this person will remain forever. Allahu Akbar. 
When the the inmates of Jahannam will be saying, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, asking and calling out for the angel which is in charge of Jahannam. They will say, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, Ya Malik, 1000 years. 1000 years will pass. Malik will say, What? What do you want? And they will say, Look, we're not asking for Jannah. We're not asking for paradise. We're not asking to be given lofty mansions. We just want one thing. Please ask your Allah. Enough now. Please give us mawt now. Ab mawt de do. It's enough now. We've learned our lesson. May Allah give us death. Give us mawt. We're not asking for anything else. We want this adab to come to an end. 1000 years. Allahu Akbar. The answer will be given. In actual fact, these people are going to remain in there forever and ever. And intensity will increase more. And to make them feel even more gham, the doors of Jahannam will be locked. No one ever will be able to come out then. Finished! Sealed up! You stay in there forever. The intensity will get worse. The sufferings will get worse. The heat will get worse. 1,000 years! Ya Malik! Ya Malik! Ya Malik! Ya Malik! What after 1,000 years? What? Mot. Mot. Nothing more, just mot. Bus now. Bus. Please, just death. No, no, no. You'll stay here. You will stay here forever. Why kick that for? What was so good in this way of life? You can have fun. You can enjoy yourself. But does it mean we have to enjoy ourselves through haram? Do we have to enjoy ourselves being the, uh, doing those things which Allah dislikes? Being enemies of Allah? Going against the commands of Allah? Is that why we're having fun? Is that why it's good for us? Of course not! But it's so attractive, people are falling into it, they seem, they think there's something there. It's a mirage, they go towards it, not realizing the nuqsan where they've got for themselves. <laughs> On one side, two people love each other for the sake of Allah. Allah Rabbul Izzat gives them Jannah. But if two people, they are themselves causing harm to each other on the Day of Judgment, they will also despise one another because of you, because of you. And they will make dua against each other. Ya Allah, him, because of him. Throw him in the fire of Jahannam, Ya Allah. Put him in there first. But Allah Rabbul Izzat has given us that chance. And what more better friend we could make than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What better of a friend? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He mentioned in regards to Abu Bakr radiyallahu taala anhu. He mentions, and many people have assisted. Many people have assisted me. Many people have done favors to me, but I have always given those favors back in return. I have always given those favors back in return. But there's only one particular person that falls within this ummah. And I don't think I can ever ever repay that particular person. Allah Rabbul Izzad will take the responsibility of fulfilling the favors he done to me on him himself. مَا لِأَحَدٍ عِنْدَنَا يَدٌ إِلَّا وَقَدْ كَافَأْنَاهُ إِلَّا وَقَدْ كَافَأْنَاهُ مَا خَلَى أَبَا بَكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ عِنْدَنَا يَدٌ يُكَافِئُهُ اللَّهُ بِهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give this person, Abu Bakr, from his own treasures, because I could not fulfill the haqq which he done for me. مَا نَفَعَنِي مَالُ أَحَدٍ مَا نَفَعَنِي مَالُ أَبُو بَكْرِ مَالُ أَبِي بَكْرِ No wealth benefited me. How Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu's wealth benefited me. No wealth benefited me in that particular way. لو كنت متخذا خليلا لاتخذت أبا بكر خليلا He done so many favors for me Abu Bakr done so much ihsan for me If If لو كنت متخذا خليلا If I were to make a friend Other than befriending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would have befriended Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى عنه The friendship was with Allah My dosti is with Allah my ta'alluq is with Allah. 
My Rabb is Allah. My friend is Allah. And Rasul Sallallahu mentions, Allah, 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 wa inna sahibakum khalilullah. I have made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my friend. What about Abu Bakr? What about Abu Bakr? Inna sahibakum khalilullah. He is also the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's taken Allah as his friend. In another riwayah, in the form of another riwayah, it mentions, Allah Rabbul Izzat will reveal himself to the believers. Allah Rabbul Izzat will take away the 70,000 pardas of nur and show people. What a manzir, Allahu Akbar. What a time. What a scene. The greatest of all ni'mas in Jannah. But what Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions what? There will be a general gathering for the Muslims. A general gathering. Allah Rabbul Izzat will go to Abu Bakr and have a khas gathering. Allahu Akbar. Because that ta'alluq was made, that friendship was made. We can argue that this was the Sahaba. These were the Sahaba, so they had that, that islah, they had that ta'alluq and friendship with the Prophet ﷺ. Even the people that came afterwards, Allahu Akbar, Abu Malika, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. What is his example? Allahu Akbar. A robber came, a bandit came, hijacked him, and was about to do away with him. He mentioned, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, three times. When he said Ya Rab the third time, he saw a horseman come, took a spear and stabbed that, 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 uh, the robber, and stabbed the robber, and there and then he died on the spot. He fell down and his body even lit up with flames and rotted. Burnt! Now, Abu Malik asked the question, Who are you? Who are you? Where did you come from? He mentioned when you raised your hand and said, Ya Rab, the doors on the fourth sky, the fourth, uh, the fourth sky, the doors started shaking because of your Ya Rab. Allah Rabbul Izzad heard your cry. Allah Rabbul Izzad heard your pukar. Allah heard your nida and your calling out. You are the friend of Allah, Allah could not let that go to waste. When you said, Ya Rabb, O oh my Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Who from you malaika on the fourth sky will go to the assistance of my friend? I am the angel from the fourth sky which came to your assistance. When you said, Ya Rabb, once more, I came with us with a spear. On that horse I came and I did away with that person that caused nuqsan to one of the friends of Allah. This is the ta'alluq people had in the past with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your friend's mood can change according to the weather. That same Allah, He's only asking for ita'at. He's only asking to be worshipped. He's only asked to follow His commands. We turn away from that ideal. We are throwing away that ideal. We are throwing away that ta'alluq with Allah. For what? For what? For whose friendship? And the easiest way through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get to Allah's friendship is what? Muhammadur Rasulullah. The best way. The best way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends wahi and revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell these people, inform them, instruct them. If you love Allah, become like me. What will happen in return? Yuhbibkumullah. Allah will love you. The love is guaranteed for that person that follows the commands of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Guaranteed success. But yet unfortunately, that youngster likes to roll in the street wearing the latest designers of the time because his friends are doing it. He wants, he wants to bop in the street, Allahu Akbar, with arrogance and pride and look and stare at people. Allah Rabbul Izzat mentions in the Hadith Qudsi, Al Kibriya'u Ridai, Wal Azmatu Izari, Faman Naza Ani Wahidam Minhuma, Kadhaftuhu Finnar. Kibriya, pride, is my outer garment and greatness, grandeur, majesty. This is my lower garment. 
minhuma. If anybody tries to take one of these things which belong to me, if someone tries to be proud, someone tries to act great, someone tries to show their majesty, I am gonna throw that person in the fire of Jahannam myself. I will throw him in the fire of Jahannam myself. Allahu Akbar. That's what that way teaches us, doesn't it? Don't take no for an answer. Don't let someone look down towards you. We've got a rep to uphold. Are we rude boys? And we've got to show them the real way. We can tell them what to do, they can't tell us what to do. Who are you telling me? Who do you think I am? Am I someone small? You are small! You are the creation of Allah. Pride was not yours to take. Pride was not yours to own. Allah Rabbul Izzad owns this. You don't have this. You can act like that. And Allah Rabbul Izzad will take you to task Himself on the day of Qiyamah. But that's what that way is teaching us. It doesn't teach you God-fearing. It doesn't teach you piety. It doesn't teach you taqwa. It's teaching you to be low. But we fall victim, Allahu Akbar. How can the Muslim be so blind? Allahu Akbar. Maybe because we haven't heard of the fadila. Look at this, a person raising their hands to Allah. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. And Allah, that person coming to the assistance of that person. Ta'luk was made with Allah. Now that ta'luk is not made with Allah. That's why we are seeing the zilat we are seeing. That ta'luk with Allah is not made. Very sad. Very sad statistics. The general masses are moving in this way. The general trend is moving in this way. But you have the keys in your hand to lock the door. No one can do it for you. No angel is going to come from the sky and throw you onto the line of haq. You have to take that stand and say, no, no more. Bas, finish now. Now I'm going to turn to Allah. Now I'm going to go towards Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes the friend of somebody, Allah Rabbul Izzad comes to the assistance of that particular person. In a very famous and authentic hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant this hadith Qudsi. مَنْ عَادَ لِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ If someone makes enmity, if someone makes dushmani, if someone has beef with one of my awliya, with one of my friends, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَقَدْ آذَنْتُهُ بِالْحَرْبِ he doesn't have to raise his hands. I will declare war on that person myself. I will declare war. I will take badla. He won't need to do nothing. Man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harb. I will come to the assistance. I will come to the aid. A very ajib incident comes to mind, which my one of my respected ustaz he mentioned in the dars of hadith. Itself is not a hadith, but it outlines the incident very, very clearly. You and I can pose that i'tiraz that look, Sahaba, voto hai because they had the Prophet around them. They will, they will had their connection with Allah because that with a teacher like Rasulullah, you are bound to get results. But as time went on, the question can come to mind: Can we find this ta'luk? Can we find this example? And we say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. There was one person once he was walking. An old Buzrug, one Sheikh was walking. Allah, 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 Allah. He was in his own he was walking and doing dhikrullah. He was in his own sort of own way. When I say own way, don't start thinking he was like some malang or something. That's just fake. He was just making dhikrullah and just going on his way. A couple are coming towards him. A couple is coming towards him. He just so happens, he steps on a puddle, water comes up, it touches the dress of the particular woman who is walking towards him, or by him. Now what does this rude boy image teach us? You're walking with la hawla wa la quwata, you're walking with your girl and someone goes, you see what he just done, you're gonna let him get away with that. And now pride kicks in, I've got a rep to uphold, you know, I've got to do something, you know, that thing. So you go there and cause dramas. So he, she done the same thing. You're going to let this old man get away with this? He's made my clothes dirty? So what happens? He rolls up his arm, goes there and gives the old man one slap around his face. Hard one. 
And bichara, the person, he falls down in the water himself. Full. No ihsas. That's what that janwar life teaches. Don't let no one come in your way. You do what you need to do. You're on road, bruv. You're on road. On the way, the road where? The road to Jahannam, bay. No other road. But nevertheless, what happened? This what happens. He gets hit, he falls. He gets up. He wipes his face. He goes about his normal business. He pulls round or to this, but the, there's some shops there. One person sits him down. He says, I made this agreement with Allah. The first person who walks past, I'm going to give them some milk. You know, like we have the Dood Jalebi guys. Dood Jalebi? Dood Jalebi, bhai? Yeah. Haan, hai. He was like this, he had a big cry and he was serving some milk. So he said, the first person comes, I'm going to give them milk. It's a rainy day, cold day. So nevertheless, the Buzruk sits down. He goes, Ya Allah, teri shan kya ajeeb. On one side, Ya Allah, I'm getting a slap. On one side, I'm getting milk. <laughs> so Ya Allah, yo, this is ajeeb mamala. Yours is ajeeb mamala. Your situation is ajeeb. Nevertheless, he's sitting down, he's, eating, he's drinking this milk. He hears a loud scream. And the scream, you can tell. One is a little taqalluf scream where you just scream because you've just seen an insect or a spider. And one is a genuine, painful, deep, frightful, dard scream from the depths of your heart. He heard it and went, oh, what's happened? Something did not sound right to him. That was not an ordinary creepy crawly here. So Bichari, he had, he, had this, he had this softness for the people. He felt love and muhabbat for the people. They are abilakhir, they are the makhluk, they are the, they are the old creation of Allah. So that everyone goes, because such a loud scream, people start gathering. As he is coming, a woman looks at him. That same woman, who because of her, he got hit round the face. She says to him, she goes up and please, I beg you, please, or badwa ni karna. Please don't make any badwa against us. What happened? They were walking, husband and wife. The husband steps on a rock. He falls over. He cracks his neck. He dies there and then on the spot. So she said, "Please, don't make badwa against me, please." He said, "What badwa? I never did any badwa." And then he pauses and thinks for a moment. He said, "Oh." Now I understand the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now my ustad mentioned to me in Urdu, so I will mention to you in Urdu first. He mentions, Achha ye maamla hai, Tere yaar ne mujhe maara hai, Phir badle mein mere yaar ne usko maara hai. Yo yaar, your friend hit me, So my friend and my yaar hit him. This is the badla Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. That ta'alluq with Allah, Allahu Akbar, it used to be a very strong one. Unfortunately, we're knocking on the wrong friend's door. Why would you want to roll with someone that's going to want to poison your blood? Someone that wants to throw you in the fire of Jahannam. Because the friends you are around, if they are doing haram, you are going to socially accept it as, as something which is acceptable. It's going to appear to you, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Because my group of friends, they are doing it. Someone's got the name Muhammad, someone's got the name Abu Bakr, it must be okay. Naturally, shaitan will start entertain, giving you negative thoughts. I swear by Allah, you are better to stay by yourself than sit with such people. If there is someone who is a friend of yours, and he's only going to take you to the fire of Jahannam, he is a person who is full with evil, he is a person that does you no good, it's better to sit by yourself, it's better to abstain, it's better to be a loner, it's better to sit by yourself locked up in a room than have such a friend like this. Al-wahda khayrun min jaleesi su is better to be by yourself than be with such a person like this. Some people we found, they come onto the lines of deen. They come on one month, two months, three months, and what happens? They feel lonely. Shaitan comes and attacks an idle mind. It's a devil's workshop now. They're by themselves, they're pondering, they're thinking. I used to do this. I used to get up to this. Shaitan will infiltrate in that brain and tell him, remind him, remind her. Remember the time you used to roll without hijab? Remember the comments you used to get? The remarks you used to get? Now I'm looking like this. No one's looking at me. No one's turning towards me. My sister, my Allah is turning towards you. My brother, my Allah is turning towards you. Allah was always there. But now you are becoming more the friend of Allah. 
Why are you throwing that away? It's better to be a loner than rather go with people that are going to bring you down. Rather be a loner than be with those people who are going to drive you to the fire of Jahannam. Rather be a loner than that person who will do no good for you in your dunya and not even in your akhirah. If you have a good friend, it's better to befriend that person than rather be by yourself. Islam encourages good friendship. Islam encourages ukhuwa and brotherhood and sisterhood and akihood. All this stuff. We need to look for the right friends. We need to search for the right qualities. One particular sage of the past, on his dying, when he's dying, his last wasiya to his son. He gives his son one nasiha. And he mentions, Ya Bunaya, Ida aradad lak ila suhbadir rijali haja. If ever you come across a stage in your life when you have to befriend somebody, Fashab man ida khadimtahu sanak, wa in sahibtahu zanak, wa in qa'adad bika mu'natun manak. Befriend such a person. Befriend such a person. When you associate with them, when you roll with them, they will protect you, they will look out for you. You don't know someone that you're going to roll with and leave you right on the last minute? Dramas kick off here, let him deal with it and run away. First of all, we don't go looking for trouble at all. A Muslim does not do this. But if somebody comes and brings massive loads of beef to you, to a certain degree, you can protect yourself. But you don't want someone to abandon you and run away. وَإِنْ سَحِبْتَهُ زَانَكْ If you have a friend like this, he's good qualities, he's good traits, those good things will rub off onto you as well. وَإِنْ وَإِذَا قَعَدَتْ بِكَ مُؤْنَةٌ مَانَكْ If ever a difficulty, something befalls you, this person will help you get away from your burdens. He mentions further, إِسْحَبْ and befriend that person. إِذَا مَدَدْتَ يَدَكَ بِخَيْرٍ مَدَّهَا وَإِنْ رَآ مِنْكَ حَسَنَةً عَدَّهَا وَإِنْ رَآ مِنْكَ سَيِّئَةً صَدَّهَا Befriend such a person. Whenever you extend your hand to do something good, he will take your hand further and take you further in your good deeds. He doesn't be an op- a-, a hindrance. They don't be an obstacle. A sister says, Inshallah, from today I'm going to wear the hijab. The other sisters who are in that circle, who don't do it, they say, Mashallah, do you know what sister? You do that, Inshallah. You carry on with that. You're doing a good thing. And make dua for us, Allah puts in our heart as well, not to feel the heat, we also do it as well. Because naturally everyone wants to do it. But unfortunately the mind has become so, Allahu Akbar, so, we, and even some people, inferiority complex. Some people don't want to do it because of inferiority complex. I will be associated, oh, you see that Muslim going? Yeah, this one. But if a friend of yours, whether it's a boy or a girl, if your brother, your respected brother who's a friend says to you, carry on doing your good deeds, Abdullah. Carry on doing your good deeds, Muhammad. You are doing a good thing, my brother. My sister Aisha, you are wearing your hijab, mashallah. You look so great in your hijab. You look so beautiful in your hijab. They increase you in your good deeds. That's the person you should befriend. وَإِنْ رَآ مِنْكَ حَسَنَةً عَدَّهَا if they see your good deeds, they count those good deeds. MashaAllah, my friend Abdullah, boy, he prays salah, and he does nawafil, he reads Qur'an, he does dhikrullah, he talks and he mentions your good deeds. You know, you don't praise the person's face. They uh, notice your good deeds. They see the good deeds you do. You rather have a friend like that. Meaning, don't befriend a person that's going to always look for your faults. Always look for kire. Look for ways. How to disgrace you and degrade you. And this fake rude boy image, one of your fellow friends, let you just stand up a little bit and go, what bro, are you standing up to me? What are you standing up to me? That is your friend? He's got your back? He's waiting for an opportunity to spit in your face. <coughs> Take that friend. They look at your good qualities. When you intend to do something bad, the person will say, Hold on, Abdullah, what are you doing, my brother? What are you doing? Aisha, what are you doing? You want to take the hijab off? Think twice, my sister. They're there to assist you. Be a friend with that person. Allahu Akbar. Ishab, man idha sa'altahu a'ataq. 
وَإِنْ سَكَدَ إِبْتَدَاكْ وَإِنْ نَزَلَتْ بِكَ نَازِلَةٌ وَاسَاكْ He mentions three more nasiha. Oh my son, imagine death is coming to me. Listen to this. Ishab, man idha sa'altahu a'taak. When you ask your friend, befriend only that person, that type of person. If you ask them, they will assist you. They will help you. They will come to your call. They will come to your needs. وَإِنْ سَكَتَ ibtadak. If you by some chance, by chance, you fall out with that person, that person will strive to make men's first. What do we say? We fall out with someone? Allow him, bro. Allow him. Let him come to me. So much arrogance. What should we think to ourselves? مَنْ تَوَاضَ عَلِ اللَّهِ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ if you give me, if you meet, make the wadur, if you are humble, you have humility for the sake of Allah. Rafa'ahu Allah. Allah Rabbul Izzad will increase your status. But what does he mention? Ah, befriend that person. If you ask that person for help, they assist you in your help. If you by chance happen to fall out, they will start the conversation. وَإِن نَزَلَتْ بِكَ نَازِلَةٌ وَاسَاكْ If ever any problem falls on your shoulders which you cannot bear, they will be there to be that leaning support and that leading shoulder. That leaning shoulder. They will be there to assist you. They will be there to help you to alleviate you out of your difficulties. إِسْحَبْ مَنْ إِذَا قُلْتْ صَدَّقَ قَوْلَكْ وَإِن خَاوَلْتُمَا أَمْرًا أَمْرَكْ وَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمَا آثَرَكْ Befriend such a person. When you speak, that person will say, MashaAllah, my friend, he or she, he's spoken the truth. She has spoken the truth. They back you up, they assist you. If ever you discuss a fair, you have a friend and you sit down and you say, listen, I need to make mashura with you. With khair khai, with from their heart, they give you good mashura. Because they want khair for you. And lastly, وَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمَا آثَرَكْ If you both want something, if you both dispute over something, that person makes sacrifice over their own desires and says, you, you are my friend, I want to give it for your sake. I want to give it for the sake of Allah, I want to give this to you. They give you tarjih and they give you preference. The time was near to death and he says, listen my son, these 12 golden advices, these are the 12 golden advices when you want to seek a friend. My dear respected brothers, my elders, my mothers, my sisters, time is too short. Time is too short. Take that person who will benefit you in this dunya. Take that person as your friend that will benefit you in the akhirah. The path is narrow. It's long. We have got no provisions on the way whatsoever. Start taking those provisions from today. I swear by Allah, making a U-turn from those friends is easier and better and more wholesome and more fulfilling for you than having those people that are going to drag you down into recession, down to the bottom, down to the floor, down to the depths of Jahannam. It's better to have an evil friend. It's better to abstain from that person than have an evil friend. But if you have a good friend, associate yourself with that friend. Be part with, be friends with that friend. Hold that person's friendship hand in hand. You will benefit yourself in this dunya. You will benefit yourself in the qabr. You will benefit yourself in the akhirah. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives us this tawfiq to befriend such people insha'Allah. My purpose of coming here was to talk about this importance. Because it's something we've forgotten from this ummah. Sadly, the wrong, the wrong path is that thing which is attracting us. That way which is destruction is attracting us. That way which invites the wrath of Allah is attracting us. We need to make a fresh start from today. You need to make an azam from today. Many, some people may be from those people that are doing wrong, that are doing shar, which are doing evil. Allah has given you the tawfiq to come to this masjid. Make a U-turn to Allah and befriend Allah from today. We all can do this. It's not nothing difficult. 
It's not like we have to eat glass or walk on coals or wear armor of metal. Very simple, you have to make an azam from your heart. And with that irada, with that intention, you turn towards Allah with 100% sincerity and you ask Allah for istiqamat. I myself make dua to Allah. He gives us this tawfiq to make Allah as his friend. And he gives us all the tawfiq to befriend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May that friendship last through this dunya until the time we die. May that friendship be a source of nur for us and light for us in the qabr. May it means it be a means of nur for us in the akhirah. And may that same friendship put us underneath the arsh of Allah and take us into Jannah al-Firdaus. I also make one dua, just as how you and I have, have, gathered us here, have gathered here. We make dua to the Almighty and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also gives us tawfiq to gather this same way in the akhirah as well. Wa akhiru da'wana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله عليه صلاة الله وآله والأحبة لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله Ali, he was